Hello everyone. In this video, we will be building a convolution neural network first and then we'll build a tool that will be used to explore the gradients of the convolution layers. So basically, this tool will help us to know when a data has been passed through a convolution neural network and has been classified what features are being used to classify that object that is in, present in, the, in those images and also to verify if it is using the right features or not in a higher level okay so the first step will be to build uh, a neural network a simple neural network and this uh, will be using the MNIST data set again for this purpose. So let's start by importing the necessary libraries. Okay, we're going to import TensorFlow, then Keras, and data from the Keras. Import MNIST. Okay. Okay, from Keras library, and import. Uh, okay, not from Keras, from Keras um, dot layers. So we want to import the necessary layers for this conv two D, the convolution one. Okay, we are gonna need the input then also the tense neural network then the flatten then we will gonna need the max pooling we can also add the patch normalization and some dropout if you want to implement it okay. to define the final model we're gonna need from keras dot models import model okay. we're also going to need some plotting functions so from matplotlib dot uh, lead import pyplot as plt also for color scheme we're from matplotlib import cm so, so this is the color scheme okay and um, we'll also add one small thing this is just an accessory it's not necessary uh, this will be used for uh, tracking the progress or the iterations so, so from tqdm import tqdm if you haven't installed this library just uh, pip install tqdm and it will be done okay just to make sure that you are on the same library versions with, as me so let me print this also okay for the keras i'm using which ver which version and tf dot version Okay, so let me load everything that we have here. Oh, not Keras. Oh, okay. <laughs> From Keras. Okay. So I'm using um, 2.3.1 of Keras and 2.0.0 for TensorFlow. Okay. Now let's load the data. We're gonna load the MS data set. Okay, um, it's gonna be x underscore train uh, and the label. And we have x underscore test data and y underscore test, which is the label. Okay, mnest dot load data. Okay. So let me load this. 
Okay, uh, now by default the data is not normalized, so we will be normalizing the data. Uh, and next data set. Okay, so x train will go x underscore train dot as star because when we divide it by the maximum value of an image, it will be converted into a float. So making sure it is working as a float 32 divided by 255. Okay. I'm going to copy this and just change this to test. Okay. Now that we have this, let's normalize it. And now we have a normalized data. Once that's been done, uh, we can extract the information from here. Um, the information that we are going to need is the height and width of the images that will be useful later, and also the channels. If it's a color image, um, it will have three channels. If it's a black and white image, it will have only one uh, channel. In this case, MS data is basically will have one channel. Okay, so extract necessary. Okay, so we need the image width. Uh, what am I writing? Double ID. Image width, and then we'll be needing the image height, and then we'll be needing the number of channel. Okay, so we know this one has one channel, or uh, now we need the, just the width and height. So in the way this is the x frame if you look into here and uh, the shape you will see it's 60,000 28 by 28 so the 60,000 is number of is the zero position this 28 is one this position is two uh, this is the number of samples we have this is the width of the image this is the height of the image okay so when we're writing this we're going to say x frame dot shape same thing but we only want this one, which is the position number one. The same goes for the other part. The height is the last portion of it. So it's, we're going to make it as two. Okay. Um, and so if that's the case, uh, input shape of the um, CNN network will be, it will be the uh, it will be based on this three image width, image height, and uh, image shape. If you want, we can also change it to image height, image width. Then you need to rotate. Uh, then you need to rotate the whole uh, image matrix. Okay. So input shape equals it's gonna be image width. Oops. Image width, image height, and last but not the least, number of channel. Okay, channels. Let's make it channels. It can be three, depending on how you use it. Okay. So now that we have here, um, as I made, as we can see, the way it is shaped. It has the number of images, width and height, but doesn't have the channel information. So we want to incorporate it um, on the original data. So reshape the data in a way we can incorporate the channel information. Okay. So x underscore train is going to be x underscore train dot reshape and now uh, we need here is this information so it's going to be zero for the number of samples then we have image width 
image height and number of columns. Okay, the same reshaping needs to be done on the testing data also. So I'm just gonna copy paste it and just make the changes here. Okay, so far so good. Okay, now let's run this whole thing here. Uh, shape into 28, 28 into 1. What happened here? Frame X test. Oh, my bad. Here. I didn't change this one correctly. Okay, so we rerun the whole thing. And as you can see, it is running without an issue. Okay, so we have reshaped our images. Okay, um, now what other option we have? In the MNIST data set, we have a fixed number of classes. Okay, uh, the classes we see here, for example, let's say Y train. If we just look at the first one, it is saying, okay, this is class number five. And class number zero we'll be changing it to a categorical case where we will have let's say 10 which is which will run this format so let's see if the class is five so zero 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 one zero 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 zero, zero, zero. so we have an uh, we'll have a vector where the fifth position will have one and other positions will be zero this is uh, called call, um, binary uh, transition. Uh, so we will only have uh, zeros and one, and we'll be training using a uh, binary cross entropy method to calculate the loss functions. Of course, uh, we can also use one till 10. Uh, Keras and TensorFlow supports this in the newer version, but we will go with the classic method of converting classes into uh, this one hot encoding which we which is called technically and one hot encoding or categorical variables okay so number of classes to one hot encoding number so we know the number of classes is 10 and now we need to change everything here. So we will use one of the Keras utility, Keras dot utils dot to categorical. Okay. And we will be using Y train and number of classes. Okay. We're gonna do the same thing for y test and let's run it so now after running it you will see if i'm checking the first one as you can see it has converted it into one hot encoding the way i explained earlier okay enough for the data now let's build a model a uh, simple CNN model. Build a model. Okay, so first we will have the input layer. Input layer is equals input, and the shape will be we have already defined the shape earlier here, so we're going to just put it here as input shape. And then let's name, give it a name as uh, model input. This will help us identify which is which layer later on. Okay. Uh, so this is the input layer. Then let's add a few CNN layers. Okay. So let's say 
we're gonna go with layer one will be on 2d so we're gonna apply the convolution uh, network let's say for the first one we have 32 neurons okay the kernel size is 3 by 3 we're gonna use the padding as same so that the image size is not changing at the end of the activation uh, of the end of this process we'll be using an activation At the end of it, we will be using an activation, which is let's say ReLU. Okay, and let's give it a name of say layer one. And we will pass the input layer through this. Okay, looks cool, right? Let's add layer number two. This is going to be conv 2D again. Let's say this time, let's make it double. Kernel size for this one, let's keep it three also. Uh, padding, let's keep it same again. Activation, let's make it or keep it as relu again. Um, let's add a small twist here. Um, in this one, let's add a stride of instead of one stride, by default, the strides are one. Uh, we can go for a two by two stride. Okay, so two by two. I guess and let's see. Do you want to add anything else? No. And then let's give it the name as layer number two. Okay. And it will take the input. Uh, I mean the output of layer number one. Okay. Sounds good. And let's add layer number three. Conf two D. We have let's say 128 again. Kernel size will be again number three. Padding, let's make it same. Okay. Activation, let's make it relu. Uh, Let's give it a name of layer number three. And this layer three will take the output of layer number two. Okay. At this stage, I guess we can add uh, best normalization just to make sure we're normalizing this layer okay and it will take in the whole layer three okay make sure um, you're using the capitalization correctly uh, when defining the variable Okay, so we have added enough uh, of the convolution layers. Now let's go to add uh, the dense layers. Okay. So layer three flatten. Okay. Flatten layer three. Okay. So as it is going to be uh, going to the dense layer, uh, before that we can also add uh, and drop out layer so latin drop out drop out uh, let's say 
in a 30 percent rate and input will be the previous there okay so now we just need to define um, the output layer and we will be ready output layer will be in the dense and because we have only a number of classes we already know what's the number of classes are so number of classes and as we have 10 different classes the activation instead of relu will be using um, a softmax okay and let's name it as output Okay, so that's this. So we, now we can complete the classification model. So let's say classification model will be the model where the input will be the input layer and the output will be the output layer. Okay, we don't need this parameters when defining the model. So we'll be defining the model as this okay once so if we run this our input one layer is missing kernel size we don't need a kernel size for the input shape Okay, file name layer one, so it's missing on the layer one on this one. All right, layer one 32 kernel size. I guess that should be fine. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, I figured out. So I did a typo here, it should be kernel and el here in all the three layers. So that was the error. So the kernel size, if we run it now. Okay, so stride has, oh yeah, it has to be strides as. Output tensor to a model must be output of chaos layer that's holding fast limited data found coordinates of Oh, yeah, I forgot to add the output layer here. Output layer, output of layer three as input of output layer. So, there you go. Sorry, it seems I'm making a lot of mistakes today, but it's all good as you, you will know what issues to avoid. So now the summary, if you write the classification model in this one model or summary you will see the summary of the model as you can see here uh, this is the model input layer one layer two layer three we perform the batch normalization flatten then added some dropouts and then the output layer so the number of total parameter that is trainable is at three, uh, 343k almost 344k the parameters and the out of that 256 is non-trainable okay looks good now we need to set up the training parameters before starting to train this model okay. so the training parameters uh, the, the things we will be needing is the batch size Let's say we, have, we do a best size of 128 because this data is pretty straightforward. And epochs or iterations, let's say we're gonna do uh, 10 iterations, say, just to keep it small because the main goal of this uh, video is to show you uh, the 
or introduce with you the tool that can help you to identify what layer learns from different objects and what those what are the information that are used to make the decision if it falls in some particular class or not okay so we have the classification model right and okay classification model uh, we need to compile it so we're going to compile it with um, like i mentioned the loss function is going to be categorical cross ent entropy so categorical uh, c a t e g o r i c a l categorical cross entropy then we have the optimizer we'll be using as before the adam optimizer okay and we will be following the matrix accuracy okay this should do so now let's fit the model classification model dot fit so we have x train and y train right the data then the batch bat size will be equal to batch size then we have the epochs this will be equal to epochs and for the validation we will do a validation split which will be 0 0.2 so 2% of the data will be used as validation stage. Okay. Um, if, let's also evaluate the classification model. So the score will be something as classification model. Dot evaluate right and we are going to pass the test data so we're going to check with the test data and let's make it the keep give it a values of zero okay by default it is one it will show you how it's going but we are gonna shut that part off okay so the output of this will be something like this so the test loss will be on the score also so score zero this will show you the loss and if you want to see what the accuracy is it's going to be accuracy and the score of one i guess this should do and let's run this so it started training the data while the model is being trained let me pause the video recording and once it's done we will start from that point on so the run is completed and the accuracy we can notice here is around 98 percent with this data it is easily achievable because this is a much more cleaner data and uh, simple as CNN network can learn it much easily. So now we will go into the more complex part. The goal, so that we want to know is so what does the filters see in an image? What type of visual patterns the convolution model looks into before making the decision? The process is simple. That we will build an Porsche model based on the classification model itself and pass an input image through that through it and see what the layers and especially the activation uh, filters see. Uh, the goal will be to maximize the loss uh, in a simple mean of activation. Okay. For this, uh, we're going to build a class tool called Layer Visualizer and I'll build it in a way 
uh, so that it can be more general and you can use it on different projects, especially for your final project. So let's say class, let's say we define this as a class and let's call it layer visualizer. So first we need to define the initials. So we're gonna say init self. It took too many things. Self, it will need the image width and height. Then the training original model. So this is a classification model that we were talking about then we'll be needing the learning rate uh, for that cases we didn't define the learning rate but in this part we'll be needing it and iterations of back validation so uh, the main thing that we'll be doing is we will pass an image through the classification model and also calculate uh, the gradient of a particular layer uh, that has been passed through this. So let's say uh, we want to know what the different layers of this convolution, this 128 convolution layers are learning. So we'll pass an image through this and based on the results of the loss function we will also do a back propagation and see uh, the method that will be called as gradient ascent so we'll just see what changes are being made whenever we image, images we are passing and make a decision which features are important and what it is looking at at that stage okay so self dot image height will be equal to image height oops then self dot image underscore width will be image width uh, we'll be uh, needing the uh, model. Right. Self dot model is the classification model. Then self dot lr, which is the learning rate, and self dot um, iterations. is iterations so i made it as iteration so let's change it okay now we will need several helping functions the first one that we'll be need needing is a feature extractor so given an input which uh, and we know our target layer the features it is learning so define uh, feature extract extractor. Okay. We'll keep the self for the class module itself, and we'll also need the name of the layer. For this one, first we will need the model. So we're gonna call it from the self object, self.model. Okay and then we will set up a model that returns the activation values for our target layer so the layer will be model uh, oops layer will be model dot get underscore layer so we get the layer that is that we're going to define in this case and it will be based on the layer name so the names we gave here will be pretty helpful in this case then the features will be more will be model for this we will take the same thing as the model input 
and the original model and in this one we will give it as layer and okay look into the model output because we want to calculate the loss function based on this and let's return the features next we will define a function uh, function so that we can uh, compute the loss for the given input image and for the selected layers output that we were getting from this one okay so compute loss we give it a self okay we were going to need a filter index because let's see if we're selecting this first layer we have 32 Layer, uh, filters in total in this one 64 and 128 we can investigate one of them we can investigate all of them so but we need to go through one by one using an index so that's why we're going to use a filter index okay then we will have the layer name and then the image we are going to pass it pass through to calculate it okay so feature we're going to call in this function inside this function so self dot feature extraction and we're gonna name the layer layer name it, uh, when we supply it on this function it will take it from there this this feature extraction function okay then we will have to calculate the activation value from there so feature and if we're gonna pass the image through this. Okay. Once done, we need to see the filter index. So filter activation, uh, the one we have selected, how it is acting on it, right? So for all the images that we are passing for that any other size, we are gonna look into only that uh, that filter index okay so once we get that one we what we want to do is calculate the loss right so the loss function will be um tf we're going to use that tensor function and reduce mean and for the reduce mean we will pass the filter activation Okay, and let's return the loss we are calculating in this case. Now, now that we have done the, we've done this, um, we will be the next function that we need is um, a function um, that will calculate the gradient with respect to the image for the filters, and that is what's going to be the most important part of it. So, what we can do is first call it TA at the rate of tf dot uh, function this will help as a to, the, uh, as to mention that the next function uh, will be using functionalities of uh, static tensorflow so tf uh, let's say because this is going to be performing a gradient ascent but let's give it the same name then the self mandatory self uh, and I guess we're going to need the same inputs, I'm assuming. Yeah, I think we should, we'll, we'll be needing some, if anything else, we can add it later, later on. Okay, so with tf dot um, gradient tape as tape, so we're going to do the loop here, tape dot watch, pass the image through it. And then we're going to calculate the loss. And for this, we're going to call this previous function called compute loss. So we're going to do it is call the object from self and compute loss. And of course, uh, it is going to use the same inputs as we are passing it through this. Okay. Now that it has calculated the uh, gradient uh, so uh, the loss function we need to calculate the gradient right so calculate the gradient for this 
okay and i guess the gradient will be something like take dot gradient and we need to pass the loss and image so as we do in gradient descent or ascent uh, what, what we're gonna do on the gradient descent we're taking uh, a subtraction in this case uh, we're doing a gradient ascent so we're uh, we're gonna add the learning from this whole thing so but first so that the system doesn't blow up what we want is add, um, I mean, normalize the whole system. And so normalize the calculation. My, I guess, the grad will be tf dot math dot, um, let's do an L2 normalization and pass the previous graduation, gradient to calculate. So the the updated gradient will be uh, that gradient will be something like image plus equals uh, self dot lr, which is we're gonna multiply it with the learning rate and then add the grad on top of it. Okay. At the end of this calculation, let's um, let's return the image that we are we were passing through here and also get the loss function. Okay. Uh, that was pretty straightforward and we are done. We have all the necessary information. Now just to you know, put that, put it in the same same place together. So let's just uh, define one more function, which we will call as the visualizer. Okay, this will act as a, um, as a function that compiles all of the things necessary for this project on this tool together. Okay, so filter index, we're gonna need all this okay, again. And, okay, um, now that I think, uh, we should have a method so that in case we don't wanna see one filter at a time, we can see multiple filters at one go, okay. So let's add one more experimental case and we'll think about it in the letting steps. So first, let's say for I in TQDM, TQDM is gonna be um, work as a visualizer and uh, inside this, we're gonna write the range. Yeah, it's gonna be the self dot iteration because uh, that many iterations we wanna perform for calculating the image losses, right? So image loss will be self dot gradient ascent, right? And it will take the input as the filter index that will be passed through here and the layer name and then the image. Okay, and what we wanna do is once this whole process is being calculated, we wanna see the filters. Okay, for the moment, because we don't wanna mess anything here, let's make it none. Okay, it's not gonna affect anything in our code. Okay, so let's take the image because the image output we will have here will be in the tensor format. We need to convert it into a numpy format. So we're gonna do its image dot numpy. Okay, so it's gonna convert everything to uh, a numpy format. And that's what we can use to see how, the, how it works out. I mean, and see, plot it using the matplot function because it will be it's it work it doesn't work on the TensorFlow a tensor format but works on the NumPy format. Okay, and I am show image two dot reshape. If you remember, we have those images as uh, let's see, let's test 
dot shape. Let's say we're going to take only one of them. So it's 1, 28, 28, 1. But we need an image of 28 by 28 shape because otherwise it's a four dimensional one and a matplotlib will not be able to show it. So we're going to reshape it to 28 by 28. And for the color variation, let's use the cm dot. Uh, let's let's do the whole, this one. Okay, and once all this is done, we can return the final image and loss. Okay, we'll think about checking into the multiple filters later on. Okay, so we're done with this whole tool. This is the tool we have been working on. Okay, the layer visualizer. Okay, let's make it capital. Sounds good. Okay, so we let's run the function um, the class first to make sure the image that is a function defined. What's the error? Self dot model is a called classification model line number five, which is 105. Duplicate argument image height. Okay, so we have a duplicate argument somewhere here. Okay, so it is saying there is some duplication. Uh, oh, okay, found it. So when we are defining it here, I have defined this twice. So it's one of them should be weight, width, and the one should be height. Okay, so again, let's rerun it. I uh, hope there is no error. And yeah, there is no error. So finally, to test the tool. Let's hope there is no more errors in this case. And we want to check how different images perform with this. OK. Uh, let's define a function here. And let's call the class. I think I made it capital K, so layer underscore Visualizer, yes. And there's the visualizer, and I think the inputs were image height, then image width, then the classification model, I'm assuming, classification model. I don't know why it's coming at the time. Then the learning rate for this, uh, let's let's go with 0 0.2, not by default. If we don't define it, it will go by these default numbers. So even if we don't define it when we're calling it on the bottom section, it will be using this one. But if we are using a different parameter, it's also fine. Iterations, I guess so let's the default one it was 50 let's let's make it 30. okay now this is just uh, making defining an object k which will have all these functions that we need to run okay and let's first do one thing and define the, the layer names okay. on layer names I guess we made it as layer one, layer two, layer three. So it's it's gonna be pretty easy. I guess. Okay, layer one. Layer two and layer three. Okay. 
and the output of the final one was image and loss so image loss and we're gonna go call it k dot uh, this last function was visualizer so visualizer uh, the filter index we don't know this thing so we might want to input some variables here and for this last one which is the filters we are going to keep it as num we still haven't played around with this so let's say the first the filter we want to play around is let's say, the first one okay so and the layer name is going to be uh, the layer we're going to explore is the first layer so let's make it zero okay for that image um let's pass one of the test images so let's see uh, i am um, show so if you pass x underscore test one dot reshape 28 by 28 so we're gonna pass this image which is uh, a seven and see what the filter is looking into okay uh, so basically this x test okay and um, let's hope we don't see an error Convolver is not defined uh, there you go so as you can see the tqdm function that we implemented here is showing us the progress of how many iterations is performing? Okay, I'm gonna pause this video for the moment to make sure. Oh, completed. So as you can see, uh, in the filter index zero, this seeing almost the seven, as it should be. Okay, now uh, let's see um, on a later layer, let's say the layer number three, we will be checking the first index. If we run this code, you will see this is what it is looking at. Let's see a different index on the filter. So this is what it is learning and this is where it is mostly focusing on this filter let's see let's check another one uh, this is the proposition it is looking so if you notice uh, that each filter is focusing on a different aspect of the image see around as you can see it is focusing around this line <clears throat> so let's modify this code and here let's see uh, so that we can see multiple filters at the same time if filter is greater than one or here in just to see the progress then the range will be for filters so if this value is more than one, it will start going into see what it can perform. And we can put everything here beyond this. Okay. And uh, this will be J. Uh, let's make something change as subplot here and integer filters by let's make it four and four okay this this should do and we also need to write one more case where <clears throat> the filters are less than what we have so it will be basically the original code we had and let's fix this indentations we don't need this part here 
and this j here will be the filter index okay so whenever this the value filter is more than one it will run this code and show print as multiple filters otherwise if we it's less than one or one or none it will go into this one where we define the filter index okay so let's say the filter we want to see is 50 let's make it 50 okay oh one more thing uh, we need to add um, j plus one here in the subplot okay i think we should be fine oh, here it should be filters okay so let's redefine this function then call everything from here as you can see it is showing you the progress here So if you notice the filters are learning at different th different things different parts of it. the initial one is getting an, uh, the original seven but as you can see different high level features and proportions of it has been learned uh, through it and we can make these changes or play around with it uh, with different convolution number but make sure uh, this classification model summary here how many filters you have uh, options to play around with okay so let's say we want to see only i don't know only 30 filters okay filter index let's keep it one and it's going to be on the layer number two okay let's run it it's much faster in terms of execution okay as you can see the features in this layer is that it is learning is a little different than what we had on the previous version of it okay so by the way the error you're seeing is mostly due to this okay uh, uh, you can play around with these numbers here how many subplots you want and everything uh, for this this was just in a rough estimation and you can figure it out uh, so make it five this, this should solve the issue Yeah, that's all the issue. And you can also see how it looks like. Okay, so I guess that's all for this one. Um, still, I do need to mention that there's another method called gramcat, sorry, my bad, gradcat, um, which is an extended version of this. And using that, which is this paper, that can visual explanation for deep network via gradient based localization. You can see how what are all the features that are learning. We are, we are already doing it here, but with just a few modification and visualization aids, you see if it is classifying based on correct identifier or object or not. Right. So when the model is saying, okay, we have a cat in the image it will light up this area where the cat is and with, when it is saying dog it will light up this area this is an interesting paper i will suggest everyone to read this and this is the structure of how this model has been trained okay i will not go into the details um, you just need all i can say is you just need to 
modify this code a little bit to get the same results as they have here. And this is also a good uh, blog post where it is ex it explains uh, how the GradCam works and with some small code chunks uh, to help you through the process. Okay. Otherwise, uh, just by modifying this a little bit based on the paper, you will be able to get same results. Okay. So that's all for this video.